Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to today's Unseen video. We got plenty to go through again, actually quite a bit in the WrestleMania folder and that's the folder that we're going to start with. Uh, and we've got this that was meant to be in yesterday's video uh, and it wasn't because for some reason it didn't show and I don't know why, but we've got it here. This is the announced participants for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal that's going to take place place on SmackDown. So you can see Cedric Alexander, we've got Ashanti the Adonis, we've got Pretty Deadly, Cameron Grimes, Inda Shear, Creed Brothers, Ivar, Alpha Academy, JD McDonough, Apollo, Omos, Bronson Reed, Ricochet, Andrade, Chad Gable, Bronson Reed, and Shinsuke Nakamura. I'm trying to see if there's anyone else that I've missed. How many is that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That is 20. That is 20 people. So that probably looks about right. So you'll have to let me know down in the comments who do you think is winning the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, honestly, Andrade or Chad Gable would probably be the ones that come to mind. Andrade or Chad Gable. We know that Chad Gable is sort of still in the mix for the IC title. And we know that Andrade has only just got started. So for me, it'd be one of those. I don't think you could really rule out Big Bronson Reed, though. I think Big Bronson Reed has got a good shout at winning this but yeah i'm split between those two at the moment i'll go chad i'll go chad but let me know your thoughts down in the comments below right pipe bomb thank you uh you might have seen that i mentioned this during the predictions and a big thank you to everyone that checked out the wrestlemania predictions in fact the video did so well um i thought i would just upload it to twitter and onto facebook as well um because honestly i was hoping that video would do about what these videos do these videos tend to do kind of between five seven thousand and i was thinking well the predictions video hopefully you'll do about the same it did it's already done 5,000 so I was like man brilliant so I think when videos start to get to about that 5,000 range I really want to share them and put them onto uh, Twitter and put them onto Facebook because, you know, I really want these videos to be seen. Uh, we spend a long time kind of compiling this information. I really want them to be seen. But I think uh, I'll probably only do that if they do reach that kind of 5,000 mark, you know. So, yeah, big thank you to everyone that checked out the WrestleMania predictions. Uh, in that video, you might have seen... Uh, this so pipe bomb thank you uh, coast to coast designs the people that have created that stage concept that you've seen everywhere uh, they said we heard from a source in wwe that several million dollars were cut from the wrestlemania production budget by the new leadership Due to this, the design was only finalized last month. It's usually finalized many months in advance. So that's not really a good sign, is it? That's not really a good sign that they've cut back on the production budget. And that now means that the WrestleMania stage is maybe not as adventurous as what we've seen previous is that a sign of things to come does that mean every year the stage is now going to be less adventurous not a good sign that not uh not uh not a fan of that news cal thank you tagging me in this so some wwe world lineups for those that are interested so you can see these are just some of the people i don't believe it's everybody uh because some of the big big names uh have been announced obviously for wwe worlds uh these look like they're a bit of a mixture we got some big names here but there's no cody for example and i know that cody is going to be there uh no seth no becky but so uh, you can see in the top left we've got who's there on thursday top right we've got who's there on friday bottom left is saturday bottom right is sunday so it's these people and headliners maybe is that maybe the better way of wording it headliners so uh yeah it gives you a rough idea 
of who's going to be there on what day. So, Cal, thank you. Right, an update has emerged on WWE stars potentially being removed from their WrestleMania match. I feel like we're going to touch on this later because, honestly, this was probably the big news today, right? It was probably the big news. It's probably the story I've seen spoken about the most, and it is that Austin Theory, Grayson Waller, according to Dave Meltzer, may be removed from the tag match, right? They may be removed. There's going to be a meeting on it, according to Dave Meltzer. They're going to do a meeting to determine whether to keep them in or take them out. Now, what I would say is there must be a reason for that. There must be a reason as to why they would look to be taking them out. I actually predicted them as winning the thing. So probably not good news for that prediction. But... Um, pretty deadly, apparently, were on one of the run sheets as being in that match. So pretty deadly were factored into being in that match. They're not in that match right now. So there is a thought that Theory and Grayson could come out. I don't know what we would do with them. I, don't, I think it'd be too soon to have them do a singles match. So I really don't know what you would do with them. Unless they're thinking of using them elsewhere you know we know there's this mystery slot could it be that grayson and theory get involved in that you know you could definitely see grayson and theory winding up a couple of legends getting stunned and whatever you know so is it that maybe we're thinking of using them there and then that means we can add pretty deadly onto the card they're not on the card at the moment so that's what Meltzer has reported, right? Meltzer saying there's going to be a meeting, there's going to be a decision made. Uh, and this is the big news uh, at the moment. This is what everyone's focused on. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Right, uh, I've included this from Zero News. Uh, a current champ will turn face for a major mega match at next year's Mania. Early reports are saying they might even be a face champion going into that match. So, uh, honestly, I don't know who they could be referring to. Uh, a current champion turning face. You know, could that be Gunther? Could it be EO? Could it be... Uh, Judgment Day. I mean, they're currently champions, aren't they? Um, I, like, what I don't understand is if they know, if they've got a source and they know, why don't they just say, <laughs> like, rather than it, it's always so cryptic with these, uh, like, news outlets. And as I said, Zero News, I'm really on the fence with them. I'm really, really on the fence with them. We sort of looked at that yesterday. But uh, listen, I read this. Uh, I suppose the problem with this is that you can't prove it right or wrong until it, like in 12 months' time. Because how do we know that a current champ is going to turn face for a mega match next year until we get to next year? So you can't really disprove this because by the time we get to next year, we're not going to remember this tweet. So, yeah, I just thought I would show you some of the things that I read on a daily basis. Right, WrestlePurist said, as of last week, Street Profits and Bobby Lashley against Carrie and Cross and Authors of Pain was booked to be at uh, a WrestleMania Philadelphia street fight. So there we go. That was Dave Meltzer as well. Right, the Woe movement said Cody is advertised for every Raw after WrestleMania. It's happening. Do you know what's quite funny? Uh, every time there's a bit of something, any kind of news, I see people saying it's happening. So I saw that there was uh, some stuff to do with Roman. And then there was people adamant that meant that he was now going to retain. And now you've got this, that Cody is advertised for every Raw after... Is that surprising? That he's going to be on every Raw after WrestleMania? It's Cody. Raw is his brand. Does that mean it's happening? I don't think it means it's happening. Right? I think it is going to happen for him. But I can't say that this news means that it's happening. Right? I can't say that at all. I mean, what I would say is if he wasn't advertised for those Raws, then that might suggest he's going to take some time off after WrestleMania. That would suggest that he probably isn't going to be champion. 
So what I would say is if he wasn't on the shows, that might indicate something. But him being on the shows, I, I don't know that that indicates anything. So I don't know. Uh, again, I thought I would uh, show you this and you can make your own mind up. So uh, Jordan, Mark, thank you. Right, uh, John Cena, Mattel, thank you, has posted this image. I don't think we looked at this before, but he posted this, and he does post random images on his Instagram. And so here is uh, a rock with some shades on. I think it says the coolest rock, right? So it's got a rock with some shades on. Obviously, anything to do with rocks has got people speculating, does he mean the rock? Is he going to get involved in the main event? So obviously people were speculating and then he uh, tweeted this out, Roman Reigns, right? This is from John Cena's uh, IG, his Instagram, Eric with eyes emoji. I mean, what I would say, the rock thing could just be random because he does random posts and that was a pretty random post. And this could be because it is Roman's biography tonight. In fact, at the time of recording, I think it's just ended. So we haven't really got the reaction to it. I have seen some reaction to it, though, as it's been airing. People have said it's been brilliant. Uh, they've seen a different side to Roman. There's a lot of behind the scenes, him with his kids, him growing up. There's a bit that talks about his brother uh, that's in there as well. There's a few quotes and things that we've got later in this video. So lots of stuff coming out of that Roman biography. Obviously, it's going to take time for people to kind of select their favorite bits and share their thoughts and let it kind of digest. So we might have some of that for you tomorrow. What I would say is it's out there. If you can find it, watch it. It's definitely going to be worth a watch. Uh, the other thing I'm aware of is that not far from now, time-wise, we should be getting the Bray Wyatt documentary. It is the 1st of April, right? Be careful with April Fools. I promise you there are no known April Fools in this video, right? I don't like April Fools. Uh, you can't really do them in videos because once you get to midday, you're not. I don't think you're allowed to do them after midday. That's the cutoff point. So if it's in a video, it sort of stays on the internet forever unless you're going to delete that video at midday. And I am not deleting this video, right? So uh, there's none in this video. But so be careful of those. Yeah, be careful of those. But uh, Bray Wyatt's documentary is today, 1st of April. Uh, but they haven't said what time. They haven't said what time. I even saw someone ask Peacock, what time is it on? And they were like, thank you for reaching out. Yes, we can confirm today is the day that the Bray Wyatt documentary will air. Keep eyes on Peacock for further updates. It's like he didn't answer his question. <laughs> he asked you what time it was dropped. Everyone wants to, like, do I need to go to bed now? Do I have to stay up now? Is it going to drop now? Like, as soon as we get to the first, like, the midnight hits, does the documentary drop? Or is it going to be at lunchtime or... I mean, it'd be brilliant if we had some indication. So, yeah, keep uh, we've got to keep our eyes peeled for that. So we've got all the Roman documentary stuff. We've got the Bray stuff is going to dominate tomorrow's Unseen, I'm, I'm sure. But then tomorrow, we've got a monstrous Raw. We've got Roman. we got Rock. We've got Seth. we got Drew. we got Cody. we got Rhea. we got um, Becky. I mean, it's just absolutely stacked. Raw is going to be unmissable. It's going to be unmissable. So tomorrow's uh, Unseen might be like 20 hours long. Uh, the wrestling blog said WWE will be using drones for camera shots for both nights of WrestleMania. Also, WWE have been working with the Philadelphia Police Department for a way of preventing people from using drones at the stadium during both nights of WrestleMania. It's kind of funny how we have to be careful and have plans now for drones. It is true, though. So many people with drones, they, they could fly over and get shots for like social media so i just like the idea of an old man sat outside the stadium with a shotgun just pointing up to the heavens <laughs> just looking for like camera drones that he can shoot down be like a uh, clay pigeon shooting for him so uh jordan thank you 
Right, uh, Briggsy said it's happening again. So here is Sporting, which is a Portuguese uh, soccer club, right? And they have said 11 days. Now, obviously, it's less than that now. But uh, clearly, WWE have been working with sports teams around the world. We know that sports teams were doing a lot with Roman and Acknowledge Roman. Then they were doing a lot with Cody and his image was everywhere. Now we've just got a countdown so Sporting putting this up on their, I think this is their TikTok, isn't it? Or their Instagram. And um, yeah, maybe you'll see this from some other teams as well. I've not gone snooping, but we know they've been doing this kind of thing anyway. Love this from WrestleBuzz. Love it. Very good. So this is a, a plan of the week, although I did spot something that was missing because I'm annoying. Uh, and that's speed. I'm quite excited for WWE speed, which I think is the third, right? So um, definitely interested in doing a stream for that as well, because... Yeah, it's a whole new concept. It's a whole new show. It, it might be something that just people slowly stop caring about. But I think a lot of people will want to watch that first one. But here, look, on Monday, on the first, we've got CM Punk's... I forgot about that. CM Punk's interview with the MMA Hour, so Ariel Hawani. Then we've got WWE's Next Gen... That's a documentary about tryouts and trying to get signed by WWE. Looks really good. Then we've got the Bray Wyatt documentary. And then we've got Raw. I mean, I, I, I don't even know where to begin. The CM Punk stuff might need its own video. The Bray stuff will probably need its own video. Raw is going to be Raw and I'm sure will dominate Unseen. Uh, next Gen, I, I mean, I think bits of that will just have to go in Unseen. But, I mean, oh, my God, there's so much stuff coming. Uh, then on April 2nd, we got NXT, of course. April 3rd, I believe that's the day we get Speed. And Rock and Roman are going to be on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon. April 4th, we got The Bump. They're live from WWE Worlds. We got more WWE Worlds. We got SmackDown. We got the Hall of Fame, right? On April 6th, we've got NXT Stand and Deliver. Then we've got WrestleMania Night 1. April 7th, we've got the Slammies, and I want to do a stream for that. Uh, then we've got WrestleMania Night 2. Then on April 8th, we've got the Raw after WrestleMania, which I'm hoping is going to bang this year. And then on April 9th, of course, we've got NXT, so it's not until April 10th that we actually get to sleep or blink or, like, try and recover from everything that's going to be coming our way. So uh, Unseen from this point is going to be an hour long. I've got no doubt about that whatsoever. Uh, I've got no doubt about that at all, you know. Uh, and also, we have found out when the WrestleMania stage reveal is going to be, and that is coming up later in this video. Not the reveal, just the information as to when it's going to be. Right, uh, CM Punk has picked Roman and The Rock to win on night one because he says Seth is the weak link. I love that. He said it's hard to go against the bloodline. He said it's easy to go against Seth. Uh, and he said it's hard to go against Cody. But because of Seth being the weak link, I've got to go with uh, Rock and Roman. Shots fired. Shots fired. So, uh, yeah, I love this. So, uh, look at this. Josh said, Ricochet, please be a part of WrestleMania. Like, like that's his choice, you know? Like, Ricochet has decided he doesn't want to be at WrestleMania this year, right? Uh, Ricochet said, okay, I've got an idea. And here's a streaker, look, running uh, on the pitch. He's completely effing naked. So, this is Ricochet's plan for getting into wrestlemania he is going to try and be a streaker so you know listen that is going to be a wrestlemania moment there are no two ways about that i love how this did, i didn't even watch the clip really but he's got his, i think he's got his clothes off he's running goes onto this thing straight over <laughs> man he goes skidding for quite a while doesn't he actually he get that looks like so much fun life is for living 
Ooh, look at him, man. Yeah. And I love how he just, like, goes for it then. As soon as he goes over, he just puts his hands and his legs out and he just, <laughs> he just goes with it. Look. Woo. <laughs> yeah, he should definitely do that. He should definitely do that. Right, WWE planning to add a major gimmick match. So that's just, again, more news about the fact that that street fight between Final Testament and Bobby's group is still expected to be added to the card. Right, here we go. Look, Jackie Redmond. Is this our top final one? It is. Jackie Redmond said it's going to be busy in Philly. So she said, I'm going to be hanging around WWE World on Thursday. See you there. White heart. Right. So on Thursday, she's got a Q&A with Rey Mysterio. Q&A with Cody Rhodes. 8 p.m. on Thursday. WrestleMania set reveal. There we are. There it is. There it is. 8 p.m. on Thursday. Right. Then on Friday at 5 p.m., uh, which we'll do the live stream for that, the WrestleMania kickoff press event. Right. Then at 10 p.m. after SmackDown, she's going to be hosting the Hall of Fame. On Saturday, she's doing the countdown to WrestleMania show. And then uh, 7 p.m. is WrestleMania Saturday. I'm guessing backstage interviews, whatnot. On Sunday, she's doing countdown to WrestleMania and then WrestleMania Sunday. So that is how her mania schedule is looking. But the big thing there for me was WrestleMania set reveal, uh, 8 p.m. Thursday. So I'm sure they'll announce it anyway, but we've got the heads up thanks to, thanks to Jackie. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Jax. Right, uh, Ilya Dragunov is not planned for a call-up at this time, but is expected to make his way to the main roster upon losing the NXT Championship. With some in NXT feeling he is beyond the brand at this stage of his career. How amazing is that? And there's uh, a little bit more uh, information on that as well. I did read, and I think it should be in here as well, that they see him at the same sort of level as Gunther. They they think they've got like a Gunther level talent in Ilya Dragunov, which is amazing. So that was coming courtesy of uh, Fightful Select. Right, um, this was something that was going to be in yesterday's, but for some reason it also did not show. So the question was, what would you guys do if R-Truth started hanging around the final testament trying to join you? And I love this answer. Carrion said, what would we do? I would remind and show the world about Ron the truth killings. And you would run for your life because Ron doesn't joke or laugh until he puts you in the hospital. Uh, he carries on. Let's whoosh it. He carries on. He says, um, I like Ron killings, right? A lot. The world is lucky they're getting the nice guy right now. Oh, mate, that's such a great answer. That is such a great answer. I wasn't expecting that. But uh, Carrion just sort of reminding the world there's a different side to our truth and don't you dare forget it. Right, look at this. Look at this. What the flip is this? What's going on? Jade getting right up in the face of Bianca and this footage, man, this footage only dropped eight hours ago. Where's this footage been? Where's this footage been? Hey, we all saw them all pointing at the sign and everyone getting excited, but what the flip is this all about? Jade and Bianca happening, said uh, Chris. Bianca, Jade getting right up. I don't, she kind of, can you see Bianca sort of taps her on the shoulders, gives her a bit of a shake, like, is this just her being fired up, do you think? Do you reckon that's her? Come on, let's go, girl, let's go get it. And then Bianca sort of pats her on the shoulders. Like, it looks confrontational, but Bianca's reaction, I'm not sure it is. The way she pats her on the shoulder. If that was confrontational, then, you know, Bianca touching her might set Jade off. But then, how does Naomi react? She comes over. 
Oh, I can't tell. I, I can't tell. I really can't tell. I really can't tell. I don't know if that's just like Jade, like, yeah, we're doing it. Let's go get him. Come on, Bianca. And Bianca's like, yeah. But from a distance, it just looks so confrontational. I can't tell. I really can't tell. I'm, I agree. What's going on? Oh. <laughs> Tomorrow slash today, CM Punk's first extended interview with Ariel Hawani since his WWE return. Sure, there is going to be discourse in this app. What is he going to say? What the flip is he going to say? You know that this man is going to ask this man all about everything he's going to ask him about AEW. he's going to ask him about all out he's going to ask him about brawl out he's going to ask him about what it's like to be back i mean oh my god you've got to know i mean i'd imagine this has been recorded and uh i would guess that wwe have wanted to have a little look at it first so i'd imagine they know what's in this but if they don't oh my god they're going to be, it's going to be squeaky bum time for them, isn't it? What the hell is going to get said in this? This interview is going to be unmissable. And there is clearly going to be a soundbite that comes from it, if not at least 50. So lots of juicy uh, info on the way. Javon Evans said, looks like the streets are about to eat soon. King Ricochet, I am ready whenever. So Ricochet said, anytime, anywhere. So someone said, I need to see Javon Evans take on Ricochet. The excitement around Javon Evans is insane. The kid is like 19. He's competing on NXT Level Up. Every time he competes, he seems to do some new move. There's a, no, a new one where I don't think we've got it, but there's like a sunset flip where he gets mad height, comes down, flips the guy over, uh, is catching the eye of people. Um, people are so, so excited for this guy. So, so excited. I wonder actually if it's in this. Uh, let's have a little look, shall we? Let's whoosh it over. I'm always a bit nervous with these because they're actual clips. Uh, the streets need Javon Evans against Ricochet. Let's take the sound off. Look, bah, look at that kick, man. And then he's going to kip up what we got here. There he goes to the outsides. Look at that. Look at that. That's not the clip I was thinking. There's other clips of him. But... Um, also, I like every... Look, this was three hours ago. Every time there's a new up-and-coming flyer, the streets need to see them versus Ricochet, Ricochet. Just so you all remember, yeah, I'm really like that. So, Ricochet, fair play. It is true. Every time there is some buzz around some high flyer, the streets always need to see them go up against uh, Ricochet. So, that is true. So, Javon Evans said it looks like the street's about to eat soon. Ricochet, I am ready. Right, Sports Kida uh, with a quote from Paul Heyman. So, to be the first person named to the Hall of Fame by Paul Levesque, to be the first headliner of a class that he has chosen, is one of the greatest honours of both my career and my life. So Paul Heyman just saying like how much it means that he is the headliner and that he has been like one of the first people to be selected uh, now that Triple H is choosing who goes into the Hall of Fame. And, and it's true, isn't it? I mean, what a, an incredible honor that is. Right, Brady, thank you. Here's Tony. Look, war ready. He is looking jacked. He is looking so big at the moment. I don't know quite what that Elia news means, though, because if Elia is not expected to be called up soon, but they will call him up when he loses the NXT championship, that sort of implies that he's not losing it to Tony. Um, I thought there was a good chance that he would. I thought there was a good chance he would, and then he would get called up. But uh, the news sort of suggesting otherwise at the moment. 
Right, Brony said, it's nice to see they value Elia as someone on the level of Gunther. So here we go. This was the quote. Internally, WWE see Elia as a prospect on the level of Gunther, planning to push him in a similar way once he hits the main roster. Elia Dragunov is coming. Elia Dragunov is on the way. And then there we've just got... Uh, uh, another bit uh, I think we've already looked at on Elia. So that was WWE. Let's go down to uh, Bray Wrights. Wow. Okay, I forgot we had this in here. So this is a new Bray trailer, and it's pretty much got everything we've seen in before, but it's just got a few new bits. And anything that I didn't recognize from a previous trailer, I just jotted it down. So That's what we'll do is skip to the bits that stood out to me. The first one is 22 seconds. So it's here, this. I've not, I don't remember seeing this before, right? If any of these have been in previous, it's fine. It's no problem. I just can't recall seeing them. This is just some of the mannequins that I think they've sort of used by putting like masks on top of and then spray painting and whatever. So this is all kind of part of that early process. That down there, I, you can only just see it, but it, it looks a little bit Mercy the Buzzard-esque. So uh, as I said, you're kind of seeing that process. Uh, then we've got, that looks like Triple H to me. That really looks like Triple H, which immediately, like, why have they got a face cast of Triple H? Because I can definitely see, it might not be, but uh, straight away I was like, is that Triple H? Uh, and then you can see like some of these other masks. Now, not all of these will be Bray, but this definitely feels like a Fiend mask. That, again, might not be Bray. Might have been a different concept. Uh, I don't know if this is... I don't know where this is. I don't know if all of this stuff is Bray stuff. But um, that definitely looks Fiend-esque. That looks like nothing we've seen, right? So, I mean, that looks really interesting. That looks like Triple H. And I can't quite tell what that is in the background. But uh, I thought that was very interesting. Then we get to see the uh, Uncle Howdy mask right there. So, Uncle Howdy, obviously just on a shelf. Um, and then uh, there's a bit here, if we fast forwards, I think we get to about 47. This is, listen, listen to what he says here. This is something that really caught my ear. Tell me this wasn't meant to be. Tell me this wasn't meant to be. So he shows a picture of Bray when he was young, all dressed up, kind of Beetlejuice Halloween sort of attire, and then a picture of what he became. And uh, Bo says, tell me that this wasn't meant to be. Kind of saying, you know, it was always going to go this way. This is what this man was always, it was what he was here to do. Uh, lots of talk about charisma, clips that we've seen before. Uh, there was a bit around here. Yeah, this bit. Not seen this before. Yowie, wowie. He was a genius. Dreaming of all these ideas. It's such a cool feeling. That. Never seen this before. He, him drawing. Him talking of, you know, dreaming of all of these ideas. And there's a sketch. Really cool sketch. He's a brilliant drawer of Uncle Howdy. And then there's the mask that they sort of ended up with. And there's still so many questions about this. So many questions. I don't know that we'll get like all the answers that we're looking for in this. But again, uh, stuff that we've seen and uh, things we've heard before. But I like this bit of him putting the mask on. He put his heart. That bit there I thought was really interesting. You're seeing him becoming the fiend, right? And uh, I'll play Triple H's comment as well. He put his heart and soul out on his sleeve. It's one of the geniuses of him. It's also one of the things that was difficult to work with him on. I don't know if I can work like this. Couple of things there. Triple H saying he had his heart and his soul on his sleeve, right? Uh, it meant he put everything into everything. But it, he was quite raw, probably, at taking criticism. Or everything was, like, if you messed with it, it probably really affected him. It sort of suggests he didn't have much of a thick skin, 
right? He, he had his heart and his soul on his sleeve. What you saw is what you got. And he said that was one of the genius things about Bray. But it was also one of the uh, difficult uh, things to work with him on. It's what made it a bit difficult to work with him, which I, I think is really interesting because we know that he got fired by WWE, by Vince. And I remember a sit-down interview with Triple H when people wanted him to come back before they'd brought him back, before White Rabbit. And Triple H said, he's like a whirlwind. You have to learn how to control his creativity because he's just throwing stuff out all the time. And just when you think that you could grab onto summer, he's changed it and it's evolved. And it's like trying to control a tornado. And I, I, all of this stuff is not negative stuff. It just gives you an insight into the creative process, right? It gives you more of an insight into him as a man and how he went about his creative process. So all of it is just fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So even those comments, which some might say is negative or whatever, I don't, I don't read them that way. I just think it gives you a real glimpse into what he was like to work with and what he was like behind the scenes, you know? So I thought that was a very interesting comment from Triple H. Then immediately you've got this shot here of him dressed as Burnt Fiend. There's Bruce Pritchard's. And uh, Bray is saying, I don't know if I can work in this. I don't know that, you know, I think the movement's probably too restrictive. So again, more behind the scenes kind of conversation as they're trying to work out the kinks and work out the right way forward. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. And then the other bit, uh, I think that might have been all the bits then. I think all this stuff is stuff that we've seen before uh, as it kind of heads towards... You know, his dad's, his passing. And uh, there we go. Bray Wyatt becoming immortal. April 1st. You know, it literally, it's it should be any, any time. Any time. But we don't know what time because Peacock won't tell us. Because they're haters. So there we go. Uh, fascinating. That was a new trailer uh, regarding uh, Bray's documentary. And uh, we'll have to see what the rest of it has got for us. Right. Uh, best night ever. So uh, the, the reason why I included this is because of the little cut there. Uh, Cody has got a little uh, like bandage or plaster or something uh, just over his forehead. So people just saying like these are the effects. These are the the lasting injuries that he suffered at the hand of the rock. So there that little bandage, that little plaster thing. So uh, there we go. Hashtag best night ever, WWE Manchester. Not Manchester, UK. Manchester in America. <laughs> oh, this is, a, this is awesome, right? Look at this. Hey, why are you so upset? Yeah, they want him back. Who? Cody Rose. <laughs> what happened to him? He just died. He didn't die. <laughs> is he hurt? What happened? She's not wrong. He just died. This is my best friend. Aww. Is Cody Rhodes your best friend? Cody is Cody's that little okay. girl's best friend. We'll be seeing back when we go to wrestling. Cody's Aww. okay. Aww. He's all right. Can I say, how dare that woman tell this little girl that Cody's okay? Right? How dare she? Does she not know about kayfabe? Right? Cody got absolutely beaten down. Yeah? He got beaten down. He got left in the rain. This girl is right to be upset. Right? Because it's still real to her, damn it. And that mother should be saying, you're absolutely right to be upset. You're absolutely right. He didn't quite die, but he, was, he almost died. And you're right to cry. That would be my reaction as a parent. So... Uh, poor parent, and that's what I'm going to say. But um, I'm only joking, of course. I do love that uh, reaction of uh, the kid saying that he died. <laughs> he pretty much did. So, uh, Jax, shout out to you. And then Cody on his Instagram story said tomorrow. And then look at this. New shirts. Should we go uh, full screen? There it is. 
American Nightmare with blood all over it. So really playing into what went down last week on Raw. So love it. Thought that looked really, really cool. Right, that was the Cody folder. Let's go into the Roman folder. Obviously, there's going to be a few bits in here because of his documentary. So the entire landscape of WWE and positioning of our business has changed as a result of Roman Reigns' almost unthinkable championship reign. He is a once in a generation. He might just be once ever. So Triple H promoting the documentary. Paul Heyman says, uh, working with Roman, uh, they have a great amount of trust in one another. One of the reasons the collaboration works so well is that we can veto an idea if we don't like it. So he says that if Roman comes up with something he doesn't like it, Roman will take his opinion on boards and vice versa. If Heyman comes up with an idea, Roman doesn't like it, he'll take Roman's idea on boards. Um, and they're both just so dialed into that creative process. They just want what is the best for the creative. Uh, and Wrestle Purist again, uh, saying uh, Roman Reigns is the most innovative, transformative, disruptive superstar in the history of pro wrestling sports entertainment. The reason why I can accurately make this statement is because Roman Reigns employs two tenant mantras of show business, right? So let's see what these are. What are the uh, two tenant mantras of show business? One, he reads the room too. He knows his audience. That's why he would fit into any era, whether it's 70s against San Martino, 80s against Hulk Hogan, 90s in the Dangerous Alliance or the Attitude Era with Stone Cold and The Rock and DX or the John Cena era, uh, the Doctor of Thugonomics or now uh, in the tenure being enjoyed by Roman Reigns in his own era that he created. Woof. Tell you what, Paul Heyman putting him over super strong, but so was John Cena. Many have held the title, but none have elevated the position and have had as much success personally and for the entirety of the WWE like Roman Reigns. A true one of a kind, and in my opinion, the greatest of all time. Wow. Wow. Big statements, man. Big statements. Right. Let's have a look at Raw. A couple of things here. So, Roman acknowledging that tomorrow uh, it's going to be Roman and The Rock on Raw. We are sold out as well, baby. We are sold out. I think over 13,000 tickets have been sold for Raw. Uh, what team is going to get momentum? Will it be Judgment Day or will it be uh, DIY A New Day in a big, I think this is like a giant eight-man tag match. So it looks like we're getting that. We're getting Sammy against Bronson. Will Bronson make it 2-0 against Sammy Zayn? And uh, we found out yesterday we're getting Candice and Indy taking on Ivy and Maxine. Uh, the go-home show of Raw is sold out, making it the 12th consecutive sold-out televised live event for WWE. So there we go. It is sold out. Right. I think we've got two more folders. Uh, one being the fun folder. Let's make our way down. Wow, there's a bit in here. Oh, I forgot about this. No context, Flair. The dirtiest player in the game. Look at this is brutal. This is brutal. Yeah, look at this. Oh, the dirtiest player in the game. Ric Flair moving sensational Sherry in the way. She seems to go down hard, man. <laughs> She seems to go down real hard. I don't know if she catches her head on the barricade or on the floor. Sting looks real concerned. But uh, <laughs> the dirtiest player in the game. Woo! 
Hey, this was funny. You remember the news that um, A-Town Down Under might get removed from WrestleMania? Well, they responded with a motivational, it's got emotional music, and they're both basically saying that, uh, you know, we, we've done it, we deserve it, we've done the hard miles, we've put the work in. It's like this inspirational, motivational, like emotional video package. It's only 20 odd seconds long. I can't play it because of the emotional music that they've used. But um, it is very fun. Uh, and I like this as well. Grayson Wallace says, A Town Down Under is the best tag team in the world's Dash Wrestling Observer Newsletter. <laughs> So they've seen the rumor that they could be getting removed uh, and they've responded with this. Austin Theory said, we are so motivational and we are on our way, man. WrestleMania, a town down under. We're going to have to wait and see if they do get replaced, but they're having a little bit of fun with this story. So love that. So Jax, thank you. Uh, and look, Vic said Dave Meltzer in 2024. Missed. Missed. Just by a mile. <laughs> Another miss by a mile. Can we get closer? No, we were further away. There we go. So uh, that was <laughs> Dave Meltzer, uh, his hit rate in uh, 2024. So, uh, Zaheeb, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Master Taker, Bianca, Jade, Naomi, our truth all pointing at the WrestleMania sign. So uh, that was very good. Thank you. Mark says, damn, look at this. Oh, my God. Look at the bunny. <laughs> I love the laughing as well in the video. The bunny going uh, absolutely messing up Joe Biden. <laughs> Easter bunny versus Joe Biden out of context human race. Oh, I love I love the voiceover Easter Bunny. Ha ha ha! Look at this. Rayon said, "Always remember to work the hard cam." So here we go, dude. Looking at the hard cam, right? You've got to always engage in the again. Staring at the hard cam. Dude goes over. Still looking at the hard cam. Working the arm. We're still looking at the hard cam. Working the arm at the moment. Headlock. Now the other dude's looking at the hard cam. Against the ropes. Look at this. Still engaging in the hard cam. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful work. So, fisticuffs. Uh, rancid carbon. Thank you. Right. Uh, Angie, thank you. Brandy Rhodes says, Happy Easter to everyone. Except the bloodline. So, there we go. Uh, lovely pit. It's like out of a magazine, isn't it? It's like a magazine shoot. Uh, guys, we've got a developing story here. This is big. This is developing. Hopefully, I will get updates on this. So, a developing story. Dwayne The Rock Johnson has been criticised by his fans for letting his daughter put a wig on him and cover him in makeup. <laughs> Many fans are saying this shouldn't be posted and strange concerns are being raised by The Rock's masculine influence. Listen, I put this into funny because The Rock is a dad of some girls and he is letting them have some fun, right? It's not that deep, right? I wouldn't even have included this, but I did I did enjoy the developing like this is uh, you know, breaking news we need to stay with this story type situation. That made me laugh. And it got 14 million views. 14 million. Mate, what the flip is going on here? 14 million views viewed this. What? What? My bigger concern is it seems like he's uh, trying to replace Alexa Bliss with this hair. That would be my bigger concern. We know how The Rock likes to bump people out, doesn't he? He tried to bump out Cody. What if he's decided, okay, right, I didn't get the main event of WrestleMania, but what if I pretend to be Alexa and then I come back and I go after the women's world champion? <laughs> <laughs> I go after the women's world championship. So I played it. Look, look, look. You tell me that's not Alexa's hair. Yeah. You tell me that's not Alexa's hair. 
So uh, in the video, he's like, tell me, I, I don't look silly, do I? I don't look silly. He's just having fun with his daughters. It's really not that deep. But oh, yeah, 14 million developing situation. Jax, appreciate it. Right, Triple H's thoughts said Miz with the dub. Too bad Brian can't find Miz for this post. So uh, this is to promote WWE Rivals, which is Miz and Daniel Bryan, right? Uh, which is kind of interesting if you think that Daniel Bryan is in AEW. So it says, uh, looks like, this is from The Miz, looks like Bryan Danielson listened to me after all. And that's because when you play the clip, he says, why don't you just quit? Why don't you just quit, Daniel? Uh, and he starts berating him. It's that famous uh, confrontation from talking smack from years ago. And he's like, why don't you just quit? Why don't you just go? Right. Uh, and actually, Brian gets up and storms out. And The Miz said, it looks like Brian Danielson listened to me after all. <laughs> Cheeky face. So uh, Miz with the dub said Triple H's thoughts, which I thought was very fun. Uh, what wrestler could convincingly hold this and make people want to fight for it, right? So this is the Waffle House World Championship, right? And Big Bronson Reed said, who do I need to fight? Big Bronson Reed has got his eyes set on this championship right here. The Waffle House Championship. That's the one that Big Bronson Reed wants. Uh, this dude has met Nia and said Nia Jax is the best. And uh, Nia Jax said, this is AI. She is not having any compliments from the fans. She is not interested, mate. She is not interested in your compliments. So uh, this is AI. Oh, I like this as well. Back as sharpshooter uh, uh, Maya. So here we go. Make the dream work, baby. Make the dream work, baby. Teamwork, make the dream work, baby. Teamwork, make the dream work, baby. <laughs> she loves that, doesn't she? Okay, 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 okay. Dead. Can we defend, please? Thank you. Now, was that so hard? They probably did that on purpose just so they could be like, we just want to play some more. No, give me the W. I need all the Ws I can get, damn it. I ain't getting them in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I need all the W's that I can get. I'm not getting them in real life. I also like to uh, teamwork, make the dream work, baby. She said that a few times. I wonder if that's a catch right phrase that she has in her in her life. I wonder if she uh, is uh, coming out with that backstage at work. Teamwork, make the dream work, baby. I've got to listen to it again. It's addictive. Look at us. Teamwork, make Look the dream at work, us. baby. <laughs> <laughs> Work, make the dream work, baby! <laughs> Why am I the only one in here? Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> that so needs to be her catchphrase. I need that on a shirt. That needs to be on a shirt. Teamwork, make the dream work, baby! Right, Nia Jax is going to be doing a meet and greet, right? Calling members of the Jax Army, right? She's going to be signing autographs at WWE World on Friday. What? I am? Oh, angry face emoji. She's not pleased about that. Triple H's thoughts with this meme. Trying to find your phone when it's on vibrate. Oh, I thought that was very good. I thought that was very good. What you gonna do? Look at this. Happy Easter, everyone. From Jake the Snake Roberts. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Zoe Stark said, good morning. Ketchup belongs on hot dogs. Go. Do you remember she caused controversy with pineapple on pizza? Uh, well, you might remember CM Punk had a go at Indy um, because she put ketchup on a hot dog. And Zoe Stark says ketchup belongs on hot dogs. Go. I think it does. I've got no problems with saying it belongs. Definitely belongs. Uh, CM Punk and Jay Uso with Tommy Hawk. Look at Jay, man. Look at Jay. Just living his best life, Eddie. What a picture that is. What an image. Amazing. Right. And look at this. So uh, Rayon74 said Dakota tried to grab Bianca's braid but couldn't reach it. So Bianca helped her and they both started laughing. Look at this. So she's throwing in some shots. She tries to grab the, the, the hair, right? She can't quite get it. So with this arm, Bianca's having to like bring it round. 
right? She's trying to, and so she sort of passes it to Dakota, right? You can sort of see a slight smile on the face of Bianca there, right? So now Dakota has got it, right? Watch, watch Dakota. Look, she's pulling. She has to cover her face. She has to cover her face. I think because she's laughing at the fact that Bianca had to just hand her the hair. Look, again, covering over. It does look like she's corpsing, you know? It does, and I think that Bianca is as well. Never spotted this at the time. Never spotted this at the time. But it does look like they're corpsing. Look, she's still got a hand over her mouth. She is absolutely loving this moment. Never caught that at the time. That's a, an amazing spot by uh, Rayon74. Brilliant. Right, we're pushed for time. We've only got five minutes. Please don't have loads. Please don't have loads. Please don't have loads. Ah, uh, we're okay. Right, Kevin Owen said he never wants to win the Intercontinental Championship again because both he and Owen Hart have been champions twice and for the same amount of days. So he doesn't want to win it again. He wants to stay at the same level as Owen Hart. Love that. So, Ricky, thank you. Right, we did have some footage of um, Omos. Let's see if we can uh, whoosh it in, actually. Oh, yeah, this might work. Here's uh, Omos, look, trying to get onto a uh, plane. You can see, look, look at, the, look at the size of him. And he's trying to, that's, he ends up sitting here. I don't know if that's Drew. That looks a bit like Drew. Not sure who this is. But, um, yeah, look, they're struggling, trying to get onto the plane. This person's like, look, you could sit here. Don't know who that is, but that looks like Drew to me. Finally gets on. Look at this. He has to like slouch down and whatever. This is MVP that's filming it. Look, Xavier Woods laughs his head off. He's like, damn, sometimes I wish I was that little bit taller, but then I see stuff like this and I'm like, nah, I'm all right. And there he is. Look, struggling. Do you know? I mean, I didn't put that in funny because that is his life in it. That is what he struggles with you know that is unfortunately what he has to deal with so yeah i i really feel for him uh but it just shows you like i thought anything that shows us the superstars traveling i find quite interesting because that's footage we don't normally see and again you just don't think about the kind of struggles that omos goes through but uh, it's well documented the struggles that andre the giant went through you know he couldn't use like hotel toilets he was too big for them for he couldn't use toilets on the airplane in fact i don't even know if omos can use the toilet on the airplane so it's a it's a different world isn't it Brady uh, tagging me in this. Apparently, Becky said that putting on matches with Alexa in 2016 was difficult because of her height. Becky was a face, so she couldn't beat Alexa up too much because it wouldn't look right since she is so small. And because Alexa is so short, it wouldn't be believable for her to beat Becky. Interesting. Interesting. Wow, look at this. A fan jumped over the barricades. Right? A fan jumped over the barricades, got choked out, and tapped out. So there's the fan look. Takes that wrestler down. This wrestler jumps on the back of him, chokes him out. The dudes tap him. Look at this. And now, like, they're going to have to try and get him out of the ring. But that dude, I don't know why. I don't know why, but he, he jumped over the barricade, went after one of the wrestlers. Uh, legit, I believe. I'm, I'm not aware that this is a, a stunt or a spot or, or anything like that. There we go. That was uh, a moment that happened from, uh, what is that? Rugged Mania, does it say? Rugged Mania. So there we go. Um, a fan jumped the barricades and gets choked out. Glenn, thank you. There's Becky signing a tattoo that someone has got of her uh, on their leg. So obviously she's doing her book tour at the moment. Becky said that she views women having big non-title matches and storylines as progress for the women's division. Uh, this was random. It's six minutes. We're not going to play it. But this is Chad and Otis. And they make some sort of like cheese board. Uh, this woman says she started doing it. Uh, during lockdown and people just love like receiving them as gifts and they she makes them look really arty and really like 
aesthetically pleasing. And so Otis and Chad give it a go. It's just one of the most random videos to WWE superstars making this sort of food presentation thing. So thought you might be interested uh, in that. AJ Styles said it's definitely one to forget because the lights were blinding people. We were supposed to go two or one. And then, of course, Brock gets to do what he wants. And so they switched it. By the time we went out there, the lights had come on and blinded half the stadium. I was peed. You know who was even more peed than me? Randy. I knew I didn't have to get mad if Randy was mad. Ronda Rousey uh, says that Lacey Evans was originally set to dethrone her as champion, but Vince last second made a change and that resulted in Liv winning. And then look at this. Don't know how that's happened, but it's happened. And we're out of time.